Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. She's the Grammy and Dove award-winning gospel darling who's best known for hits like, I love God. You love God? What's, What's wrong with you? Hey, and hey. Yep, all of that, yes. <laughs> and now she's stretching more than her musical muscles, pinning a new book, More Than Pretty. Please welcome back to The Circle, Erica Campbell. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Love it! Hey. Hi! Hi! Hello! Hello, just, just fine! <laughs> yes! Uh, fine, like me and wine and juice drinking. Yeah! <laughs> Have a seat, sis. I love it, I love How it. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. You feeling all I'm really excited. Good. It's a good time. It is a good time. And mm -hmm. now you have a new book, More Than Pretty. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about it. How did you even find time <sighs> to write this book, and why do you feel like it's essential right now? Well, well, the, the subtitle is Doing the Soul Work That Uncovers Your True Beauty. Mm. And um, I, I talk about in the book having this weird relationship with the word pretty. You hear it as a little girl, oh, you're so pretty, mm -hmm. right? Then as a teenager, you're dating boys, and oh, you're so pretty. Mm -hmm. It has a different mm -hmm. connotation. Mm -hmm. And then you enter into business, and sometimes to minimize you, you walk in the room and it's like, oh, what a pretty girl. I'm like, I'm here to negotiate. Right. I mean, Hello. You know? So it's a really interesting relationship with the word, and I, I think it needs to have power. Your pretty needs to have purpose. It needs to have power, but you need to know what that is so you have to do some work and not require uh, the accolades and mm -hmm. the oh you're so you're so you're so in order to feel good and I think that's where this kind of digital age of social media is getting us messed up how many mm -hmm. likes who's paying attention who's affirming me yeah. sometimes you got to know who you are if no one says anything yeah Ooh, yes. that's good. That's good. <laughs> in your book and I want to quote you properly it okay. says the pressure to be pretty mm -hmm. is not just about whether you put on your face every morning Mm -hmm. or have a closet <laughs> full of wigs. Women, especially Christian women, mm -hmm. are also being pressured to have pretty lives. Yeah. Yeah. So what did that pressure look like for you? Um, uh, you know, the way your kids look, the way you operate when you go to church, you know, how your marriage is, all these things, uh, it's kind of an unspoken pressure, uh, whereas if you have issues, people are kind of like, oh, girl, what's wrong with you? Yeah. As opposed to saying, you're human, I've had problems too, let's talk it out, exactly. how can I help you? And so you just learn to not care a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, about people's opinions, to know that the reason God supplied grace and love and mercy and long suffering is because he knew it was jacked up and we were gonna need it. Yes. And so it's not to abuse it, but it's to be okay if things are jacked up in my life. It's not the end of the world. I can overcome that just mm -hmm. like anything else. Yes, and you've been very outspoken about the intersection of sexuality and Christianity. Yeah. And I wanna, we love quotes here, because obviously you have a new book, so it's full of quotes. <laughs> Come on. And here's another one. When Christian women spend their whole lives hearing that sex is a sin, they can't just flip the switch overnight. Let's talk about your transition, yeah. your switch. Yeah. What was that like for you and how you were able to navigate and help other mm -hmm. women? Well, my switch probably switched early to, it's earlier fine. than it it's was fine. supposed to. <laughs> Mine too. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, mama. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was my mom that was loving and that wasn't judgmental. I remember sitting in a car with her at about 18 years old and she the way she asked me, it felt like she cared. It didn't mm -hmm. feel like, did you? And so I'm, I'm telling other people, we have to give girls information. They have to understand this fabulous body that he put us in. All right. You know, just our feelings and our emotions. I don't think we should dumb it down and say, don't shut up, don't talk about it. I think they need to understand in perspective. But this is a powerful body that I'm in, and if you teach them that, they don't give it away as easy. It's yeah. more cherished. The same way people will cherish a Louis Vuitton bag sometimes oh, wow. more than they'll treasure their other bag. Yep. I just think we should cherish it. Everybody, you don't put anything, you're not going to put trash in right. your bag. Yeah. You're not going to let anybody, you that, know what you I mean? Know, that's it's interesting, like interesting you say that, that because when I, the, the first time I had a real conversation with my 12-year-old and I told her about my past, and I said, I would have done anything to have waited for your father. Wow. All Me right. Too. Anything yeah. to have waited for your father. Yes. So I'm so glad. We have to be open with our yeah. children. Yeah. And I think that that makes all the difference in the world. You Absolutely. Do. You do. But it, 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 all, it cuts both ways, though. I mean, and because I, I married the first man I ever, what? you know, right, had right, an right. encounter with. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes you don't really get to know yourself as a woman. So it, it kind of. That's what I'm saying. You know, get to know yourself. But exactly. that doesn't mean allowing so everybody else everybody, in yourself. Every, to know you. Every, you have to know yourself by allowing everybody in yourself. can't see the contents of your pocketbook. Right. But you know what? I think this is the same for men. 
This yes. is the same for guys. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Like, don't treat yourself like a porty porta potty. Right. You know what I mean? Like, just right. anybody, any girl, anytime, because your souls are connecting. I think mm -hmm. there's just so much work that we need to do yeah. to really get free and feel good in our own skin and yes. not feel pressure in any direction from people or anything. Absolutely, absolutely. Woo, we're having such a great time with you, Erica. And uh, if you're sticking around for the full hour, Erica is going to be with us a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And you can get your copy of Erica's new book, More Than Pretty, everywhere <laughs> fine books are sold. Yes, <laughs> I like that you do this. I think I might do that. Right, and be on the lookout for Erica's new music on Warren Campbell Presents My Black Ink album, which drops October 25th. Also, don't forget, the conversation always continues at Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. Yes. Uh, Yes, we're back with Erica Campbell, and that was her newest hit single, Praying and Believing. Let's yes. talk a little bit about yes. this song. Mm -hmm. what, what space were you in? You know, when people hear you on the radio, they see you perform, mm -hmm. and they look at you on Instagram, they're like, oh my God, Erica Campbell, she has it all together. But Praying and Believing, you had to be in some sort of a space oh. to even write the lyrics to the song. Tell For us sure. where you were and how it all came out. Um, needing direction, needing guidance, needing answers, not just for me, like I now pastor a church, so now they're, they, people expect me to have answers. Mm -hmm. And I don't always have them, but I know the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. I know that if I stay connected to the Father, He'll give me direction on what to say. You know what I mean? But I have to really spend time with Him in order to have my ears open. Sometimes the world is too loud. Your own world is too loud. There's too much going on. Your bills, your That's kids, your relationship, like everything. Now. And it's like, I just need to breathe. And sometimes you need to just meditate, sit somewhere in some pretty green grass by yourself, and just talk to the Father. Lay That's it all out. If you need to cry, yeah. I cry, mm. and I want people to know this song is, I want people to know that I'm praying for them, mm -hmm. that I know it is not easy, and that some of us are trying to do it on our own because of circumstances and stuff, and you just want to know that somebody cares. The The best message I get is when somebody hits me and say, how can I pray for you? I literally got that. That means everything. Yeah. Yeah. We all need that. Yes. Yeah. We all need to know that yes. somebody's, somebody cares and somebody's praying. And then the state of our world, um, the reason I wanted to address such issues with the song is because our world needs some help and we can't just all be pissed off mm -hmm. and we can't we gotta pray and act we have to pray and vote we have to pray and do we have to pray and get busy so this song is definitely not just to sit back with pretty hands folded and pray it's get in there get That's your hands right. dirty yes. and right. do the work yes. gotta do the yes. work yes. and you know in your life and in your book you talk about how important affirmations are yes. and I am a true affirmer yes. every day absolutely and so you talk about how life's journey is important to have affirmations mm -hmm. is there any special affirmation you have that you do daily mm. that you can share with us? I daily say I have everything I need to be everything I need. Mm. It's easy to feel empty doing what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to feel like, okay, let me go through the motions. I'm a puppet. I have nothing, but I still have to give because sometimes that's the reality. Mm -hmm. You're tired, you're overwhelmed, but you got a concert, you got a performance or something. And so I, I daily pray that I'm equipped, prepared and ready. God is filling me. I have everything I need to be everything I need. Yes. Do you ever find yourself in a space? And I know this is just for me personally. Do you have to sometimes affirm yourself into yeah. believing? Yeah, absolutely. That. The scripture says, encourage yourself in the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's work that you have to do before you get to anybody else. And then even Jesus was affirmed. When Jesus was baptizing, they heard a voice from heaven that says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need that voice to just affirm you, just to fill you up like I'm not crazy. Because when you dream big, you sound crazy to people. Oh, I'm going to do this, this, this. Yes. And they go, <laughs> nobody ever did that before. I know because I'm supposed to be the first. They may not understand it. And so you need that affirmation spiritually. And then you need that self-affirmation. Like, no, I know what I'm doing. This is going to change the world. This is going to bless people. I'm supposed to do this, even though nobody gets it. Yes, mm. yes. And again, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving. Mm -hmm. What did you find out? about yourself Ooh. writing this book? Wow. Um, there was a, a story that I tell about this lady who kind of, uh, no, not kind of, I was walking past the usher and she was like, she's probably having sex and I wasn't. And it made me feel some kind of way about myself. It, it changed how I looked at sexuality and, and whether I would own my body, you know what I mean? Or feel like, oh, let me make sure nobody thinks I'm you the good girl syndrome mm -hmm. as a right, church girl. Right. You don't want anybody to think right. anything. And while I was writing this book, I feel like the Holy Spirit said to me, what if she wasn't talking to you? Hmm. Ooh. 
What if you have owned, they say, and I know they're talking about me, and I know, and what if they're not even talking about you? I think the enemy plants messages right when you're vulnerable and you hear them and get either sad or broken or angry and you own it when you really can't say, they're not talking to me. Exactly. Mm. Like, you remember back in the day if somebody says something, you go, who are you talking to? Right. Right? Back in the day. Or today. Now, or today. <laughs> <laughs> so now, right. you, you can literally be talking to me and if it doesn't apply to my That's heart, right. I go, you're not talking to me. That's hmm. your own negativity. That's your own reflection of where you are, and you're projecting it on me. But I'm not gonna take it because I don't want it. I send all that back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You better. Yes. I so mean, I'm, I'm feeling <laughs> very good right now. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Yes. yes. Beautiful. Yes. Oh man, I wish we could have you for 879 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right, but we can. We got, we got some more time. I'm gonna have her here for the whole day. Talk about this compilation and the what compilation. we can expect. Yes. yes. Uh, my Warren Campbell presents my black records. I'm yes. super excited. He was here and told us about it. I know. Yes, yes. I know. We got MC Light, which has an amazing song. Of course, his sister Joy Star, and a brand new song from Mary Mary. Uh, what? Finally. Yes. Finally. You know the people want the Mary Marys, baby. <laughs> yes. Always want that back. I know. Yes. I know. I have to ask you a question about all of my life. Yes. When you guys transpose that song, like mm -hmm. so many times within the song, because because some some people when they're mm -hmm. not musically musically they don't really get it, but yeah, it's like yeah. I thought it was genius. <laughs> so what were you guys thinking when you did that song? You know, Warren is very musical, and there's something about a key change. There's something about going a little bit higher that just it it moves you. Music moves right. you, and so and for, we knew it was right. urban, but Woo! we wanted it to. And so for those who really don't know music like that, yeah. Uh, so that you and me like. So, da, 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 da. Is that yeah, what you're yeah. talking about? Because Erica, she was just trying to hold her. Yes. No, like, yeah. All of a sudden, he was like, I knew something was up. And then y'all transposed lower at the end. Oh! Yeah. I knew this is dream. I love it. I love it. Let me tell you about life and how it has gotten right now. Yes! Love it. I love it. Okay, we gotta go to the next one. Welcome you and Warren, always you. welcome, and your sister Mary Mary, always, Thank always, you. always, always welcome yes. you and your TV family forever. Yes. Yes. Okay, <laughs> and you guys can get your copy of Erica's new book, More Than Pretty, wherever fine books are sold. And she and her boo, Warren Campbell, got some new music coming, so be on the lookout Hi. for the Warren Campbell Presents My Black Ink album, which drops October 25th. The one and only Erica Campbell!